Go to tapjars.com to learn dreams, engage my services, and support the channel. By default, text is shown on the screen. We can move it around by grabbing the gizmo like this. They'll always be upright though, so if you want to have it at a jaunty angle, we can turn on Allow Rotation. If you have more than one text gadget on the same spot, they'll display in the order they were created, with older gadgets displaying below newer gadgets. But we can use the Sort Order setting to tell a gadget to render on a different layer. Anything with a higher sort will appear above text with a lower sort, but again if they're both on the same sort layer, they'll be in creation order. Multiple on-screen text gadgets can't be moved as one. There's no way of grouping them up or anything to animate them as a single unit. But we can also go to the Settings tab and turn on In Scene. Now it will display in 3D, as if it's a flat object in the world. And we can move it around just as we would any 3D object. Then if we have these just hang out in the scene, we could group them together and move them around just fine. For this reason it's fairly common to create more complex UI in scene, to make them easier to animate around, and put them in a head tracker so that they follow the camera around. You will notice though that in scene text can get blurry when it moves through the scene, the same way objects get motion blur when they move through the scene. So to prevent that, we can use a grade gadget to turn off motion blur entirely. And now there's no more blurry text. We can also use the face camera setting to have the text always face the camera. As these are in the same exact 3D position, they'll be ordered in the same way that on-screen text is, newest on top. But sort order does not work for in scene text. When they have different positions, it's all about which of the gizmos are closer to the player's view. As these are 3D objects now, perspective applies. When we move farther away, the text appears smaller, just as any object would. But something that's useful in some games is to have an icon or something above a character's head that is still readable at a distance. We can think of this perspective as the text getting smaller or larger on the screen, depending on how far away it is. The minimum in-scene size setting gives it a size it can't get smaller than. So now when we get farther away, it doesn't get smaller, it just stays the same size, while still being positioned around the same spot it started at. It's a good idea to get some distance from the text, so that you can see the minimum size in effect, before you start adjusting this setting. If you want it to use perspective as normal, and the text is flat against a wall or something, it can start to fade out if you get far away, but we can use always on top to stop it from doing that. We're basically saying, I want the text to never fade out or get obscured by anything else in the scene, it should always be on top of everything else. So that fixed the fading out problem, but it will then show up through walls, always on top which can be cool in its own right, for an x-ray mechanic or a goal indicator in the distance. This can be used for windows, or signs, whatever you want really. But bear in mind, text boxes aren't rendered in the same way as the rest of the scene. Sculpts and paints can be lit or in shadow, blurry or in focus, and have grades applied to accentuate their look. But you'll notice the text, whether on screen or in scene, isn't affected by any of that. And this is where sticker mode comes in. With in scene on, we can turn on sticker mode, which projects the text onto the surfaces of sculpts and paint flecks in the scene. Now the text isn't rendering itself into the scene at all. The surface is rendering itself and borrowing the colours the text box has as if it were painted on. So it's rendering the exact same way that non-text objects are rendered, which means when the sculpt is lit, or in shadow, it looks just like the text was spray painted onto it. Same for blur, and grade effects. All this does is affect the colour of the surface, 
so the object's finish also affects the look of the text and you can still use fleck animation effects and the text will wobble along with it. Along with the colour it also borrows the glow of the text, so you can create very fine shapes that glow as if they were painted onto the sculpt with super precision. As I say this all works with paint too. Flecks render their own surfaces but are coloured by the sticker mode text box. So you can have a perfectly smooth wall made of a single fleck and project text onto it like this. Or give it some impasto and the text will appear to undulate with the surface. Paint has its own opacity setting, which lets us make it translucent or even completely transparent. This causes the surfaces to render themselves more transparently, which means when it borrows the colour of the text while rendering, the text will also be transparent. So the opacity of the sticker is sort of capped at the opacity of the object it's projecting onto. The same goes for sculpts. They can have their visibility turned off, which means that surface isn't rendering. So the surface isn't rendering the text being projected onto it either. Now text stickers won't just stop at the first surface they encounter. They have this box which sticks out in front and behind the normal text gizmo. We can change how far that goes out by dragging the arrows on the box, or changing the slider for the depth setting. This is always going to be the same distance on either side of the text box gizmo itself, and any surface within that box will use the colours of the text. But that means if the box reaches through to other surfaces back here, it'll apply on those as well. If we don't want that to happen, we could reduce the box to only catch the surfaces we care about. Or there's another way of limiting what can be affected by a sticker. If it's out in the scene and not grouped up with anything, it will affect everything the box touches in the scene. But if it's inside a group, it will only project onto objects that are in that same group. So if we group it up with this wall, it will now only affect that wall, and not project onto the objects behind it. Another way of limiting the projection to an object is to surface snap it to the object. To surface snap a gadget to an object, grab it using the imp, and then hold shift on the controller that's L1, and hover it over the surface of an object. It will appear to snap onto its surface. Now let go while still holding L1, and it will stay there. And now if we check, again it's only affecting the object it was surface snapped to, and nothing else. And if we surface snap it to a group, it will project onto all the objects in that group. There's another reason to use sticker mode. If you wanted, say, a name on the side of a can, you could have a text box in the scene floating nearby. But it's still going to be perfectly flat. It's not going to curve around the shape at all. So if the player looks at it from a particular angle, they'll see it awkwardly sticking out like that. We could use spray paint to draw on the text, but it can be fiddly getting it to look just right. Instead, we can use sticker mode to project the text onto the surface of the can. Now it looks perfect, curving around with the can. You'll notice though that if the text box is to be rendered on a surface sloping away, or sloping towards the text gizmo, it warps. This is because it's being projected in a straight line through the front of the text gizmo and out the back onto the surface. Think of it working like a projection of light in the real world. If you made hand animals in front of a light, you'd see their shadows on the wall. If that wall was sloping away from the angle of the light, you'd see the shadow, but it gets warped by that difference in angle. So back to our sticker, if we look at the text without sticker mode head on, it looks straight. When we turn on sticker mode, the projection looks straight behind it, more or less. But then from another angle, it appears more stretched. Again, because of that difference in angle between the text and the surface of the wall. Now if we change the angle of the gizmo, we can make it closer to the angle of the wall, and so make it less warped. Or turn it and make it warp in a different direction. Whatever you want to do with it. Just bear in mind that while a light spreads out the farther from the source it gets, these stickers project in a straight line, like a laser beam. It has no perspective at all. So when projecting in a 3D space, which does have perspective, 
Projecting on an object farther away means the text will look smaller. But remember, we can still use minimum in-scene size if we want to. And face camera works too. If we look at the back of the can, we can see that the sticker isn't projecting on the back surfaces, even though those surfaces are within the sticker box. That's pretty useful in this case, but how does it choose which surfaces will show the projection and which won't? As we saw before, it's not because this surface is behind that surface. Let's grab a chunk of wood and see how the projection is affected by a flat surface. Okay, so when it's flat on, the text shows fine. As the surface turns away, the projection warps as we looked at before. Until at a certain point, it just turns off entirely. The angle of this surface is around 75 degrees off from the text gizmo. And if we keep going to face entirely away, it doesn't show up again. So there's simply a cutoff point at which the surface will ignore the projection. Which means that stickers won't project onto the back of objects, like our can here because those surfaces are facing away from the direction the text box is projecting. If I wanted this text to show up on the back too, I'd need to copy the sticker and turn it around to apply to the back. We can use sticker mode to texture areas, adding more detail and variation. For example, this floor is a single sculpt cloned out, but I want to hide that it's just that simple. I could use a large sticker with a solid colour to make the seams less noticeable. Or change it to one of the available textures to add a layer of variation to the floor, hiding the fact they're all just clones. And adjust its opacity if I want it to be more subtle. You could even add a sticker to an entire scene to add fallen snow to it. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. Go to patreon.com slash tapgiles to learn something new every day.